Next, from our About Illinois series, we travel the deep southern Illinois to look at the massive wetlands that are a part of the Cache River Basin. This runs about 18 minutes. Hi, I'm Jim DeVu at the Illinois Cache River Wetlands. It's an environmental treasure not only for the state and the nation, but for the entire world. Here you'll find trees over a thousand years old, a vast diversity of wildlife, and a landscape unlike any other in the state. Welcome to About Illinois. Welcome as the Illinois Channel travels about Illinois. Join us as we uncover our natural treasures, the abundance of recreational opportunities, our world-class museums, and discovering our state's historical legacies. Join us as we travel and learn about Illinois. Joining me today is Jim Wakeulis with the Illinois DNR. We're at Heron Pond. Jim, this is unbelievable. Tell me about Heron Pond. Well, Heron Pond is kind of the jewel of the Cache River State Natural Area and the Cache River Wetlands. It's, I would describe it as a cathedral of cypress trees, kind of the jewel of the whole project. What we have here is a floating boardwalk that goes out into a cypress swamp about 500 feet. It's, it's on the Heron Pond Trail. You have to walk a half mile from the parking lot to the boardwalk. And then about a fourth of a mile past the boardwalk is a state champion tree called the, the cherry bark oak. It is one of 11 state champion trees found here. It has a circumference of 22 and a half feet, a height of 100 feet, and a crown spread of 113 feet. It's estimated to be between 300 and 400 feet uh, years old. Amazing, amazing. Now, I'm hearing something in the background. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Do you? Yes, what we have that? here is the great blue heron is nesting in the north end of Heron Pond. And the chuckling you're hearing is actually the young that are chuckling, uh, waiting for the adults to come back and, and feed them. Now, I, I noticed here on the cypress tree, we have what I've, I've read is a, a knee. Can you explain the knee of the tree to me and, and what that does and how that happens? Yes, cypress is the only tree that has knees. Uh, there's also the water tupelo here, but they do not have knees. The knees is actually a extension of the root system. The tupelo and cypress are the only water tolerant trees that actually grow in water. And the knees is basically acting as stabilizing that tree. You get the knees with a root system that extends and is anchored itself to the bottom of the swamp. And that prevents this tree from blowing over. Also the buttress, the flaring of the buttress. I, I look at the buttress as like a big elephant foot that really stabilizes that tree. So, and, and you said earlier that you'll never find a cypress that has blown over no, because of this anchoring. Because of this anchoring effect in stabilization, many of the cypress trees are struck by lightning or their tops are blown out, but it, it's very rare to have a cypress tree blow over. Now, one of the things we talked about as we hiked out here this week, uh, is this is a hunting area also? The yes. whole Cache River Wetlands area? Well, the whole Cache River Wetlands is a joint venture partnership. We have Illinois Department of Natural Resources. We have a federal agency, which is Cypress Creek National Wildlife Refuge. We have the Nature Conservancy and Ducks Unlimited. We formed a partnership in 1990 to try to acquire from willing sellers only 60,000 acres along the Cache River. Our major goals are to preserve, protect, and restore the Cache River Basin. With that, we have a lot of recreational opportunities. There's over 21 miles of trails. There's two boardwalks, the Heron Pond Boardwalk and Section 8 Woods Boardwalk. We have a brand new wetland center that is 7,500 square feet. It has 2,000 square feet of exhibits, a 12-minute audiovisual film, it also has interactive audio sticks, uh, which give you oral history of the Cache River Basin. 
It also links to the Tunnel Hill State Bicycle Trail, which is 47 okay. miles in length. You referred to hunting. Uh, the whole joint venture project has approximately 27,000 acres open for hunting. Uh, primarily, we hunt deer, turkey, rabbits, quail, and squirrel are, are the dominant species. Okay. And waterfowl is, is another species. Okay. Now, you mentioned 27,000 acres. That's not the total size of the wetlands area, is it? No. The whole wetlands joint venture pro project currently has about 35,000 acres in joint venture ownership. IDNR has 14,328 acres, and Cypress Creek National Wildlife Refuge has 16,000, and the Nature Conservancy has about 2,500 acres. We only purchase from willing sellers, and as we acquire this land, we do a lot of restoration work on it. Right. We reforest, uh, we do a lot of reforestation. We plant anywhere from 200,000 uh, tree seedlings a year and restore wetlands wherever possible. And so we have about a total of 35,000 acres, if my math is right. Yes. Where does the, the group want to go with this? How large are we going to get? Because you said you're trying to purchase from willing sellers. Right. Well, certainly we're trying to acquire 60,000 acres. Uh, you know, the hydrology is a big challenge here. The Lower Cache River actually runs uh, two directions. It both runs east and west. Uh, one of our ultimate goals here is uh, reconnection, a managed reconnection of the river to restore the hydrology. We also have about three to six miles of canoe trails, which uh, we've experienced mm -hmm. before. Now, it's interesting, you say 60,000 acres is, is kind of your idea of where you'd like to go. Yes. Sounds like a lot of land, but in the overall scheme of things, as you told me earlier, this, this whole area was once yes, 200 this, this area, the Cache River Wetlands initially was between 200 to 250,000 acres. And, you know, Historically, we viewed wetlands as wasteland, snakes and mosquitoes to be basically cleared, harvested. First, they cut all the timber, then cleared the land for agriculture. And what we're trying to do is put the timber back here. We're trying to restore the habitat for all types of critters, from birds to fish, uh, and provide a high-quality recreation area. Jim, I know this is just a small part of what we're going to see today, so I'm wondering, Maybe we should move on. Yeah, I think there's a lot more to see of the Cache River Wetlands Project. Great, let's go. At one time, the Cache was comprised of over 200,000 acres. But due to farming and logging in the area in the early part of the 20th century, a lot of the original wetlands were lost. Still, the Cache River State Natural Area is huge, with some 14,300 acres in Johnson and Pulaski counties. The area is so important to migrating waterfowl that in 1996, it was designated as a wetland of international importance, making the cache only the 19th wetland in the United States to be so recognized. Today, a public-private partnership is working to restore a 60,000-acre wetland corridor along 50 miles of the Cache River. But to really experience some of the most remarkable landscape to be found in Illinois, we decided to travel by canoe and see it up close. What we're paddling is the original river channel of the Cache River. You could see the river channel is defined by the old cypress on the right and left of the channel. And up here on the right, we're coming to the state champion bald cypress tree, which is over a thousand years old, has a circumference of 43 feet a height of 75 feet and crown spread of 75 feet. Now, I noticed the vegetation on top of the water yes. has considerably thinned out in this area we are now. And what we have is we have duckweed and coontail, and because we get predominantly west winds, uh, it blows all that duckweed and coontail into that extreme area we first paddled. But then as we get out of that, it opens up considerably with, with a lot less vegetation. Now, I noticed a lot of the older, I'm assuming older cypress trees are, are hollowed. Yeah, that's typical. That These older trees all tend to be hollow. The 
live tissue of the tree is actually under the outer bark called the cabian layer. And many of these trees, because they've been here so long, have been abused by nature. Either lightning or windstorms have blown the top out. With the exception of there being no Spanish moss or alligators, the area does look like the bayou. As the most northern of America's southern swamps, a relatively short drive to the cache can make you feel that you've somehow been magically transported from Illinois' familiar corn and soybean fields to the heart of Louisiana. Traveling by canoe allowed us to see at least one of the area's state champion trees and to appreciate just how much history this area holds. To kind of put this tree in perspective, uh, Christopher Columbus came to America in 1492. This tree was already 500 plus years old. It's right to think of history with the cache. In fact, Illinois' natural history is why it's here. At one time, the Ohio River ran through this area until glaciers pushed the Ohio 20 miles further south. When the glaciers receded, the area where the Ohio River had been refilled with water and formed the Cache River wetlands area. To learn more about the area's natural history, we went to the Parks Visitor Center to meet with Liz Jones of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I have one question. I'm here at the Cache River wetlands area. How did the wetlands area get here? That's a really good question, Jim. Um, one thing about this particular place in Illinois, it's extremely special, and you've seen today when you've been out and about. And a lot of Excellent. people wonder, how is this place that looks like plays a lot further south here in the Midwest? Well, the cache has an interesting geological history. Um, basically, it's, there's a number of things that came together, both physical, biological, that kind of changed or set the character of this entire place. But what I can't, probably in the easiest words to describe it is that we have, we are very fortunate there are four physiographic regions that, that overlap right. here in the, in the Cache River wetlands. Um, those occur through um, temperature, it's in a place where there's temperature and rainfall extremes. It's a place where there are two um, large rivers that come together that they have right. some influence of it. Actually, the Ohio River carved out the whole entire Cache River. And when it receded, what you have now is what we call the cache here. So where I was standing earlier today, I was in the middle of the Ohio River. Yeah, bed. you were. You All were right. in the ancient Ohio River. But so those are just tiny, those are just some of the pieces that caused um, us to have the Shawnee Hills and the Ozark foothills right. and the Mississippi Alluvial Plain all fine all right here in southern Illinois. Um, so because of all those physical and biological factors, we have four regions, basically, the, the Ozark foothills, right. the Shawnee Hills, the Gulf Coastal Plain, probably the most evident, okay. especially on your canoe trip right. when you saw bald cypress and tupelo yeah. swamps, um, and the interior low plateau, which is more of the upland areas. Um, when visitors come here, what they are most surprised by are those cypress and tupelo and that southern um, Mississippi character. Field. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this building behind me because when you go in, pretty fabulous yeah. what you walk into in yeah. there. Tell me a little bit about what we have at the visitor center here. Well, the the cash the, actually it's the Henry N. Barkhouse and Cash River Wetlands Center, and it's located here, uh, right off uh, Highway 37, uh, just outside Ullen. Um, the center is a wonderful facility that, that conveys the cultural and, and natural history of the Cache River wetlands. And there are a lot of buildings like this that you could say are around, but I think what makes this wetland center so different is that we are focusing on the Cache River wetlands, but we're also focusing on the cultural history. People that have lived here, um, or the, the, the history of this place, is one of Appalachia. Um, as you may have noticed in some of the people that you met here. And so this building is one to show how people and nature have really um, b become part of the cash and the mm -hmm. cash part of them. When you will go into this building, um, the, you're going to be greeted by folks that you, probably with the Illinois Department of Natural Resources right. and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. They'll direct you to a wonderful orientation program. It's about 12 minutes long. Um, and it gives you a really nice overview of the history of the Cache River wetlands and the people that live here and what we're trying to do to restore and protect it. From there, there's about, I guess, 1,500 to almost 2,000 square feet of exhibits. 
And those exhibits are both interactive exhibits, uh, video exhibits. Um, um, uh, we've got DVD and, and sound audio exhibits. And they all focus on or chronicle, really, this timeline of history that created the cache and what the cache is today. Um, so it's really, it's, it's full of information. And probably it would be difficult in one visit to get all the information there. So hopefully you'll come back yeah. time and time again. So it's not just the geography. It's no. just not the magnificent wildlife. It's the people of the Cache River wetlands. I would say so. I'm originally from up north in mm -hmm. Wisconsin and Minnesota. And when I moved down here some 16 years ago, I thought I was a whole lot further south than I was. And that, that southern culture is really what makes this place so unique. Um, um, in that it's so different from Chicago or Champaign or even Carbondale or Mount Vernon, which is just north of here. Um, it's a whole culture of, of living off the land and living with the land. Um, certainly, there have been lots of changes and lots of impacts from the culture and from people that lived here um, that we're trying to fix. But in, for the most part, that southern Appalachian culture is really one that worked well and, and they, they lived in balance with mm -hmm. uh, this place called the Cache River Wetlands. Not until the 1960s and 70s did we really start getting into trouble with habitat loss and degradation. And that's what we're trying to fix right now. Um, and that's what the whole Cache River Wetlands Joint Venture is about, and this center is about, is to help people understand why it's important to protect places like this. Great. Liz, thanks for your time today. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for the education. You bet. That's it for our story on the Cache River Wetlands area. And remember, for information about any of our other stories, go to our website, illinoischannel.org. I'm Jim DeVu, and thanks for watching About Illinois. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation formed to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois. If you have any comments or questions on our programming, please email us 